Do you have a blueprint for your arrangement or how does it work? Yeah, it looks always like this. <laughs> it's super easy. And you just copy paste your new track. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so that's Thanks it for, for watching the masterclass. And um, <laughs> till next time. <laughs> I arrange like how I feel it, but I think after you produce so many tracks and also DJ those tracks and mm -hmm. put it in a live set, you have some rules in your mm -hmm. mind. Not rules, but like some things you know that works and that doesn't work mm -hmm. so well. I always try to make sure that there's a little part DJs can loop. Here, for example, this part. Easy okay. to loop. Sometimes people like to add like here a noise to fade out their track, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, stuff like this. Maybe uh -huh. it sounds great for the track, but if you want to loop it, then you have like really, you know. Yeah. Okay, let's speak about the arrangement. So we have like here a little introduction. Maybe as a DJ you would start your point here. Mm -hmm. can set up here a little loop mm -hmm. as well. Check the arpeggiator. The arpeggiator is already from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now kick with the filter. And here we have this crazy drone with the feedback loop. Which goes down here. I mean, this is a very interesting part. It feels like really it's building up and then bass, line, snare, everything comes together and that sound goes off. Like after one minute, I think that's a good timing for it. Oh man, that's just a nice start. And now the track is there. I think like a minute is cool to the bass and like the lead starts to come in. Um, I think this is a good timing for, for a build up. Take your time with the build up, but not like two minutes. It shouldn't be boring, mm -hmm. especially in a time where um, Spotify and Apple Music gets more important. So this is like the build up. Here comes the bass in. Here at 45, I have a small break. It doesn't need to be, a, like I don't mm -hmm. always use a small break, but here some, for some reason I felt it's good. And then, then the fast hi-hat comes in mm -hmm. and the profit is a little bit more open here. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I feel like, okay, here it's like a peak moment already of the track. And here I have like... That low cut, the bass. Also on the kick, it's a low cut, that the impact here is a bit more punchy, right? And now the focus is on the arm. I think now for the first time the focus is really on the arpeggiator. So this is the story, the arpeggiator, everyone's following the arpeggiator all the time. It's from the beginning until the break, the arpeggiator, three notes constantly going on. also happening in that so and what's also interesting here in the drop you can see the bass is on one note so it's like building up building up building up and then here it drops in the melodic part mm -hmm. and then it feels like the arpeggiator is changing yeah. but it's still constantly going on if you want to hold the, the interest in the track you don't start with the full bass line yeah you wait, you start on one note and then in the right moment you change. To come back to orchestral parts, in the beginning I, I'm using them to show people, okay, now something new is coming up, mm -hmm. like here. Mm -hmm. And here we have also another little sound which we didn't speak about, it's just a small effect. So always when something new is coming in, or something is uh, going back or, or is, is muted. I like to add like those, those effects or drum fills or whatever. Super important there. Yeah. yeah, and here it's part of the groove. I think it's talking to the bass hit. Mm -hmm. It's talking to the delay clap, mm -hmm. to the percussions. It's just part of it. But then, in a moment when everything gets like super full, I felt like it's not necessary anymore. Yeah. Less is more, and you can see it in a lot of melodic techno tracks at the moment. Mm -hmm. It it mostly drops with a kick, bass, mm -hmm. and one sound, like yeah. one melody, and then it builds up again. Yeah. 
here it's it drops full on but I checked like each channel okay what do I need what I don't need so and then I what I don't need I mute mm -hmm. yeah um, same for example with the constant pad from the beginning yeah I really turn it down here you know yeah. it's like here minus 14 and before it's like minus 3 dB yeah. because it's not necessary anymore at this mm -hmm. part on the dance floor know already okay breaks coming but this can be also a part where it's like really party again just kick and bass has yeah. some, sometimes such a huge impact yeah. and i think in the break what's most important here or in general just to make sure the arp starts in the very beginning goes till the break here just small pause and then it comes back again so the listener listens to three notes for four minutes, constantly. Focus on the orchestral part. Step is building up again. Everything is building up again. The profit is building up again. You can see, like, here the cut off. And then here, this is actually the moment of the track. The arpeggiator is changing for the first time after three and a half, almost four minutes. And at the same time, we have the bass line coming in. That's the idea of the track. Oh yeah, it's goosebumps. It's, it's all about that moment, you know. Like when I produce the track, I was thinking about okay, how can I make that moment most amazing? And mm -hmm. first, I had like the the change of the part way earlier, yeah. and then oh, I yeah. realized, yeah, yeah, and then I realized, no, I need to keep it as more interesting as possible, as mm -hmm. most interesting as possible, and then in this moment, the bass also has to come in, you yeah. know, like. This is like the moment when people hopefully get lost in the moment. Yes. And at the same time, the off shaker comes in for the first time. So there are like, you know, mm -hmm. a few things mm -hmm. going on for the first time in the track and everything together. And I think yeah. this, is, this is so great in this moment. Keeping things for the right moment. Mm -hmm. Don't show everything, mm -hmm. you know, like decent take your time yeah. show it in the right moment wait for the right moment when the lead comes in then on top we have the we have the pad which is also playing together with the arpeggiator mm -hmm. like the same harmony mm -hmm. so everything yeah. is changing this moment yeah and then it drops and i think in the drop what i personally like that it's like constantly going mm -hmm. The bass stops for a moment, but the hi-hat is still running. Mm -hmm. And the heart beating as well. In this moment, I tried like 10 different versions, like without heart beating, maybe without hi-hat, maybe total silence. Like now everything is full on, going crazy, and also the dramatic diva pads place like an octave higher now. You just changed the stab here and then you go back to stable mm -hmm. and you let these elements do the job for a second mm -hmm. and then we have eight bars mm -hmm. done that. Now we're switching this one up here, so keeping this one stable. And at the same moment the percussion comes back. So exactly. it's always when, when something's changing, yeah. I took something off or I add something. And again here, now you're playing this, the staircase down mm -hmm. and these guys are starting to change as mm -hmm. well. After that, we're doing this an octave higher. Octave higher yeah. it's, that's super interesting. And then when we're done, we can go back down mm -hmm. uh, and, and then we're going back to... It's like, that's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. These are choices you made on purpose. I and guess, I try right? like different versions all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm changing, feel like, ah, maybe it's too much, maybe not enough, mm -hmm. I don't know. And then, yeah, this is like then the big moment basically one minute 15 seconds mm -hmm. for me that feels like enough you know mm -hmm. i don't know I, I didn't want to play it more and then i made another quick 
break because if you have like a pre quick break, it's easier to to mute um, to mute channels. Mm -hmm. You know, like here the open hi hat stops, mm -hmm. the fast hi hat stops, the offbeat hi hat stops. Everything stops, and mm -hmm. it's more easy if you make a quick moment of silence. Mm -hmm. Forest dream sound is like bring it back to the next sequence. So now we're building down. And now maybe the DJ would start to mix in the loop. Or maybe right, right here, it's, it's already here. And then I try to build everything slowly down. In an album production, I don't want to have a too long outro. Maybe yeah. it's, if it's a single, I make it even more playable. Yeah. But again, you have the possibility to do good. Yeah. So it's nice for listening, but it's also nice for playing it. Yeah. So I wanted to, to find the balance here. You're basically giving him the recipe to play it like an eight minute track here. He can loop it now. You know? yeah. And then he can take his time to mix in the next track also. Exactly, and, and we still have this kind of outro feeling here. If you work with melodic elements, it's and if it's full, it's so important to make sure they don't run all the time together and they're just layering, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. For me, it's a bit boring if you do it like this. Tracks in general are getting shorter. Yeah. Maybe it's because of streaming, but also like my mind and my ear is trained to that kind of arrangements. Mm -hmm. And I'm totally fine if it's like a short track. Mm -hmm. 